Hello, my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. And in this week's video, we're gonna cover how can you calculate a running head count with start and end date fields only. Um, so this is sort of specially catered to my folks in the human resources community that work with Tableau. I know there are a lot of you out there. Um, this is something that's sort of repeatedly come up in the human resources related projects that I've worked on. Um, so shout out to you all. I think this will be applicable in, in other areas as well. Um, pretty much anywhere you're doing head counts, this could be things even like a student head count if you're in education or um, you know, team-based headcount, number of transactions or sales, something like that. I don't know, whatever. There's probably a lot of applications for this. So the concept would be to be able to take some data and be able to say, okay, like how, like what's our base headcount? How many new hires have there been? How many terminations were there? And then whether it's monthly or quarterly or daily, like what is that running total look like? So for example, here, um, I'm just looking at, okay, you know, from the beginning of 2020 toward, you know, the begin middle of 2022, how have our numbers changed? So we were at about 700, peaked at almost 1100, and then it kind of dropped off from there. Okay, so let me show you the data that I'm going to use for this example. Um, and a couple of side notes there, I'm going to drop a copy of this data on my data world profile, and I'll put the link in the description. So if you want to download this to use this exact data to try it for yourself, um, then you can. And then uh, I'll also drop a copy of the workbook that I'm building uh, on Tableau Public, and I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So if this is something where it's helpful for you to get kind of kinetic, hands-on experience and, and follow along, then you easily can. Um, so I'm actually gonna do this whole thing twice, and I'm gonna do it from two different perspectives. One is if all of your data, both your hire information and your termination information, if all of that is in the same table. And then I'm gonna do another variety of this where maybe only your active headcount is in one table and only your terminations is in another table. So you need to sort of stitch those together, okay? So um, should be a fun challenge for us. Uh, let's dive in. So I've already got a connection hooked up uh, to my Excel file and I'm gonna start with my all headcount file, right? That's the one that has a listing of both active and terminated employees. So I will throw all, ed, all head count into this little section that says drag tables here. And this is interesting. What I wanna do is union a copy of all head count to itself. You might be thinking, why would you wanna do that? Well, one of these tables is going to serve as just our, our uh, helping us count who got hired. And the other table is gonna count who got terminated. Um, because you see the ideal thing for us is to get the hire date and the termination date into a single date column. So we can just kind of build that running value and then it just kind of goes up and down like that. So trust me, maybe that doesn't make sense at this point, that's okay. Uh, I'm a very much a visual learner, so I would need to see this to get it. So I'm gonna take head count and hover just below the existing all head count and select union. Okay, so now I get this thing, looks like little you know Lego pieces or something. Uh, so I'm gonna hit the drop down on all head count and say edit union. And what it should look like is this, all head count, all head count one. There's now two copies of my all head count table here. So <laughs> what does that mean? Well, uh, basically the table is duplicated, right? If I grab this table name field, something that Tableau generated when we just unioned those two tables to each other. Um, if I put table name on my row shelf, I'll see all head count, all head count one. If I wanna see a row count of those, they should be the exact same, right? So there's 1,377 um, total employees listed in these tables. Okay, so first up, I wanna create a calculated field which merges the date fields from the two different inputs. Okay, so I'm gonna call this my unified date. And what I will say is I will say if table name equals, and then my first table, so I could either type it out or if I'm lazy, I could right click on the label, say edit alias, just copy the value from here. So I'll say if table name equals all head count, then, so the first one is gonna be for a positive count or my hires, okay? And then I'll say else if table name equals, and then I can, uh, I guess I could reuse this from up here because it's pretty similar. All head count one, Tableau automatically added that one when it was the second copy of this table. Um, then I'm gonna use my termination date. Okay. 
And now next up, I'm gonna create another calculated field, and this is gonna be kind of more of a, I'm trying to think of what, what I would even wanna call this. I guess it would be like a, you know, head count, uh, head count value, but it could be positive or negative depending on if it was a higher or a termination. So what I'll say here is if, I guess I should just copy my logic from the last one, but that's okay. So if table name equals all head count, uh, then one, else if table name equals all head count one, then negative one. So every row of data from my first copy is gonna count as a plus one, and every one from my second copy is gonna count as a minus one. Uh, but wait, you say, not everybody has been terminated. Hopefully, <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, we're gonna end up getting rid of anywhere where the date is null, so we don't have to worry about that just yet. Um, so basically, it would say 25% of the workforce has been terminated over time. Um, so you know, only 25% of the records will come through as a minus one as a result of that. So real quick, let's see what we're working with. So in the same sheet, we're gonna do a little data testing. Um, let's put our headcount value on text and just see. So perfect, all headcount showing is 1377. All headcount one is showing as negative 1377. Um, let's try our unified date field. If I put that on my row shelf, it'll default to year. So somebody goes way back here, got hired all the way back in 83. Um, and then, so you can see a thousand of these records are null. Basically those people weren't terminated. And then here's all the years that the other terminations happened. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and back the unified date field off. That's good confirmation for us if we were missing any values. If like everything was null here or everything was null in my years, honest, my, my number one assumption would be, well, maybe my table name reference is wrong, right? If there's even something like an extra space there it's gonna to totally break you know, those references. So you gotta be real careful, capitalization, spaces, characters, all that stuff's gotta be on point. Okay, so I'm gonna put a copy of my unified date field on filters. I'll just choose years for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I want to exclude null data, right? Basically meaning, you know, I, I don't wanna count people as terminations if they weren't. So if I pull a year of unified date off my row shelf, Cool, I see there's 1,377 total hires all time and 357 terminations. Okay, so now we have all the big pieces. It's just a matter of uh, being able to compile this now. So I'm gonna leave that filter on there. I'm gonna take table name off my row shelf. I'm gonna put my head count field on my row shelf so I get a bar, okay? And now I need to put, I need to choose my like date value, like quarter, year, month, whatever I want that to be. Um, so I'm going to get my unified date field. I'm going to use a little trick here. I'm going to right click and drag unified date to my column shelf. It'll prompt me. Uh, what, what do I want to visualize this as? I'm going to choose date value quarter. Really important. That's the green one down here at the bottom, not the blue one. If you need a little bit of kind of reminder, blue dates, green dates, what's all that about? I'll drop a link in the description below to a, a video we've done on date parts versus date values. So there's a lot going on here, but that's okay. So this is showing me just sort of my net movement for any given quarter. So our single biggest positive movement in a quarter was adding a net of 106 people, and our single biggest loss was losing 58 people. So currently this data just goes through uh, the beginning of 2022 Q2. I meant to do this video like a year ago and just sort of lost track of it and just had to recently get remotivated for it. So. Uh, okay, so something I'm going to do, right, I don't want to know just the individual value for that quarter, but I want to know the running sum or the running total. So I'm going to hit the drop down on this field, uh, head count plus minus, add a table calculation, and this will be my running total. Okay, and so now I can see, you know, okay, cool. So, so what am I trying to say here? So, okay, we peaked at 1,078 people and, and kind of dropped off back down to 1,020. Um, so next up, I'm going to show you how do we, you know, what if I want to hide some of this data? Like I just want the count to start at the beginning of 2020, for example. Okay. Um, real quick before we do that, though, if you check out this info button in the upper corner here of this video, uh, we've got Tableau classes that we run every month. It's how we stay in business, how we can do all these YouTube videos for free. Um, so we would love if you're able to join us. We've got kind of the basics of Tableau. We've got advanced Tableau calculations, advanced calculations, Tableau prep, all kinds of stuff. Um, so if any of that sounds of interest, um, you can check out the descriptions and the, the dates up there by checking out that info button.
Okay, so how do I filter out the previous years I don't wanna see? So I can't, I can't just filter them out, right? I can't just like add unified date on here and be like, you know what we should do is get rid of years. We don't wanna see, like only give me 2020 through 2022. Like that's not gonna work because now we're not counting any of those hires that happened before 2020. Okay, so what do we need to do? We're gonna use what is called a table calculation filter, okay? Um, so I'm gonna pull up Tableau's order of operations. I wish I was slightly better prepared for this, but just thought of this. So a regular filter, a dimension filter is gonna filter out those hires, but a table calculation filter happens at the very end of Tableau's order of operations, which means that if we filter the year as a table calc filter, it's not gonna affect the calculations, it's just gonna affect what data we're seeing. It's kind of like hiding your data that you don't, hiding the previous years. So I'll call this my uh, lookup year filter, just to be very technical about what we're doing here. Okay. And so what I'm going to do with the lookup year filter is I'm going to say lookup the minimum year of unified date. Mm. Year there, comma zero there. Okay, hopefully that worked. Let's zoom in on this for a second. So what am I doing? Usually the lookup function is to do things like calculate percent difference between one value and the next. So you look up like points in the past or the future, but I'm just using lookup to look up like what is the year of the current column? So every single one of these would have a year, right? That's 2020, that's 2019, that's 2018. Lookup is a table calculation function. This is basically just a big silly workaround to allow us to hide data as opposed to filtering it out entirely. So I'm gonna right click on my lookup year filter, convert to discrete. I'm gonna throw this field on my filters card. And let's say I just wanna keep 2020, 21 and 22. Okay, bingo. Uh, it's got, Tableau just thinks this is a number, so it's got the, it's got the commas in there. Let me change the number format. Number custom, no decimals, no thousand separators. Thank you. Okay, so now maybe I'll set this to like a multiple values drop down and show an apply button. Cool. So now I can see, um, uh, yeah, now I, now I can just see the years that I'm interested in. And it's not like it's filtering out previous years, right? It's starting at 700. Um, and if I go back further, like this value stays at 700, but now I can see, oh, we went from 500 to 700 people from the you know, beginning of 2019 to the beginning of 2020. So like, yeah, pretty substantial growth, all things considered. Okay. Uh, okay, so now how do I change the color based on if it's increasing or decreasing from one quarter to the next? Let me just see what happens if I just put my headcount value on color, I think. Yeah, that does the trick, right? So now I can see, okay, our biggest drop off is we saw a 58 decrease from Q1 to Q2, 2022. Our biggest singular increase, uh, it looks like this one here, a 72 increase from 859 to 931. Okay, cool. So now you've gotten to see this kind of whole rundown. Um, so if that applied to you, you're probably in good shape here. However, maybe your data is not structured like this, right? Maybe you've got active headcount in one table and terminations in another table. In that case, how do you do the same thing? It's possible, you can do the exact same thing, just a couple of very kind of minor differences. So let me so go ahead and take you through that. Uh, so I'm gonna duplicate that existing data set. Uh, I'm gonna go into my new one. I'm just gonna rename this to, you know, active headcount. Uh, plus, well, actually that's what the other one's called, isn't it? That first one should be called all headcount. So let me just rename that one really quick. So that's all headcount in a single table. So then, yeah, active headcount plus terms. That's actually what I'd want to call this one. So I guess we're, I guess we're in good shape there. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna strip out the initial tables and we're gonna start from scratch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull active headcount only in here first, okay? And then I'm gonna union terminations to it twice, okay? So active headcount, those will all be positive one for everybody that was hired and is still active at the company. Terminations only, the first copy will be just when were the people that were terminated hired. The second copy of terminations only will be when were they terminated. Okay, so if I edit this union, it should look something like this. One copy of the active headcount, two copies of terminations only. 
Okay, and then from here, um, I guess it carried over some of my calculations already, which aren't gonna work, but that's okay. At least we can just kind of modify them. So unified date, how would this work? I will say, if the table name is active headcount only, then hire date, that's great. Otherwise, if it's terminations only, then that will be, I think actually I'll use hire date for that one as well. Okay, and then my second copy of terminations, so terminations only one, that is where we will use the termination date. Okay, let's just quickly make sure unified date is working. So there's some dates for active headcount, terminations, termination, bingo. I'm seeing years after all of those. Okay, so now for our headcount value, again, slight modifications. If table name equals active headcount only, then one. Else if the table name equals terminations only, then also positive one. You need to count when those terminations were hired. And then finally, if it equals terminations only one, then that's negative one. When were they let go? Make sure that's working. Cool. So 1,020 were hired and still with us. 357 were hired, but then also let go as terminations. Cool. So now, I mean, basically everything I think is just the same as before, right? So I put my head count plus minus on my row shelf. I'll take my unified date. I'm going to do same thing. I'll just do quarter, set, my, set it to bars, add some labels. Um, yeah, the lookup year filter, I don't think anything changed here because we still have a unified dates field. So look up min year unified date, zero. Let's try this bad boy out. Okay, and I guess one thing that's just slightly different here is I don't need to worry about filtering out null dates because, you know, hires will always have a higher date, terminations will always have a higher date and a termination date. So there's no kind of gray area with this one. Um, oh, so I need to set this to a running sum. So I'm gonna add a table calculation. This will be a running total. And then one more time, the old headcount value going on the color so we can see when there was a drop off in the overall headcount versus when there was an increase. Okay, so there you go. Basically the same thing, just two different approaches based on what your underlying data looks like. So there we go, we did it folks. Um, thank you so much for checking out this video on calculating the running headcount. Um, I guess maybe one more thing that comes to mind is something that's nice about this as well is that you could also kind of set like a cutoff point. So if you wanted to ever filter like, oh, you know, I only want to see like, what did the number look like up until December 31st, 2021, then, you know, you, with your unified date field, um, you know, I might just say like through 12, 31, 21, right? You could always just do something like that. Like unified date is less than 12, 31, 2021, or you could even make that a parameter, make it dynamic, right? And then the cool part about this is, you know, you could control, okay, what did this look like? Cool. We, you know, we'd never seen a quarter, at least in this time period, that had a decrease in headcount until after 1231, 2021. So you've got some flexibility here for your users as well. Um, and again, you could make a parameter and let them set that endpoint. Hey, what did it look like, you know, at cutting it off, cutting off the end date at this point? So um, okay, cool. I'll leave you with that. I feel like we could kind of go down rabbit holes forever, but uh, if you do have questions, let me know. You're welcome to drop those in the comments. Um, thank you so much for checking this out. We, we really, truly do appreciate it, appreciate your support, and we bring videos like this to you every single week. So feel free to, uh, to sign up and follow along. Uh, subscribe, I guess would be the right word, uh, if you want to see more. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon.